Um, I think that one of the things that people should be thinking about now is minimizing, reducing, because we have so much going on and there's so many shiny, swirly things uh, trying to capture our attention. And, um, you know, give yourself a break. I think that that's really important. I think it's even more important for, for parents, if I if I dare say so, uh, not to diss all of the non-parenting people out there. Um, but, you know, we have to be consistent as parents with, with our own children, as role models, with how we are modeling our digital behaviors. Um, and I think we also have to be a little forgiving, right? Because sometimes I'm on too long and, you know, even right now it's 10 o'clock at night in Paris and I'm on, but it's really important and I'm forgiving and I'm just saying it's okay because afterwards, um, tomorrow, I will definitely make it up to my children. My son has been talking about Minecraft family afternoon, so that's what I'll be doing uh, tomorrow afternoon. Um, but I, I think also um, just one other quick little tip that I think uh, that's really important is um, just kind of lowering your expectations. And I'm not saying, you know, being a perfectionist and all of a sudden just letting everything go, but I'm just saying, you know, everybody is in the same situation around the world. And I really believe that we can be kinder and gentler uh, towards with other people as well as ourselves. Um, I've had a few calls with, mm. with, different colleagues saying, oh my gosh, I'm so behind on this. I'm, I should have gotten that. And I said, whoa, we're in a pandemic. This is not an excuse, but this is let's, you know, be gentle with ourselves. You cannot keep all the balls in the air at the same way that we were doing before. So those are just a few of, of the ideas, some of the things that I've seen in my own digital parenting community, where parents are also talking about this sort of overwhelm and, you know, how to just take breaks, how to find the positive, uh, how to forgive how to lower our expectations and just how to get things done. I, I fully agree with that point, especially at, at the end, just being able to forgive ourselves. I remember speaking to many parents in, in my role as in an online school where they just, I feel so guilty. I feel like a terrible, a bad parent because my kids are spending so much time with screens and, and it's the same kind of messaging that I have is, look, first of all, we're in a pandemic, you know, you gotta forgive yourself for like not figuring everything out. Nobody can, nobody taught you about how to, to handle screen time in this age. And so we have to start somewhere. And then the other part was this notion of overwhelm is that you talked about the simple steps. And I, I fully agree with that too, because yeah. so, so many times we're, we're overwhelmed in, not in tasks, like our tasks may be the same as when we were working before, but we're overwhelmed now in more in much more in thought because you're spending so much more time alone by yourself Mm -hmm. And you know that means you have a lot more time to, to think <laughs> think about stuff, and you you get overwhelmed in like oh I could do this or I could do this I could do this, and if I do this one then it means I won't be able to do this one. Oh, you yeah. know, like yeah. can I can I really get that done? And really, the most important thing is like that small step you said, like no, like ignore everything, just do that one thing. Here's the one yeah. small thing that you can do, and here's another small thing that you can do. It's like removing all the other things through action. And, and it's, the, it's, the, um, it's the overwhelm that causes the inaction, which is really the thing that is causing a lot more stress. Is, is it, we're just like paralyzed in, in, this, in this kind of thought cycle. <laughs> Right. And it's interesting, too, that you're talking about, you know, action, um, because I think that so much of what we can do as digital parents, uh, the idea is for us to be proactive. Right. So to really get out there and figure out what we can do, strategies and, and, and things that we can put in place beforehand. Uh, so that way we're not just reacting to a situation where we're reacting to screen time, we're reacting to a cyberbullying incident um, and, and, and so on and so forth. I think that you know, being proactive, taking those small steps, just, you know, excellent, excellent. Um, yeah, and but before you go, Ed, before you continue, there was another thing I wanted to mention, yeah, was that you had said um, as well about parents feeling guilty. And I know that, you know, we will inevitably get this question about feeling guilty. And um, ironically enough, I think it was um, maybe about a month ago, um, I had the pleasure of doing a, a conference with um, Dr. Jenny Radeski, who is the um, adolescent pediatrician um, who wrote the guidelines for the American Association, Association of Pediatrics. So everybody remembers the guidelines. You remember zero to two, no screens, et cetera. So Dr. Jenny had gone back and you know revised the guidelines saying, obviously we need to think about this for FaceTime with grandparents and you know educational content. And, and so they, 
they revised the guidelines. Well, what's interesting in this story is that when we were doing this conference, we both realized and we both said, in the in, when the pandemic first started, we were telling people, don't feel guilty, you know, jump out there, get on the screens, do what you can to stay sane, et cetera. And now here we are a year later, and we both would not, would not give that exact same advice because we thought the pandemic would be, you know, two months, three months. Um, and so I think here now we have to remember balance and we have to remember um, boundaries and we have to um, you go back to trying to have that offline time as much as we can to kind of cherish that again, uh, that it is important. And um, I just want parents to not feel guilty but also to kind of search for that that balance again because it's it's essential. And if I can give you one other tip on not feeling guilty is to not think about screen time, not think about screen limits, not think about it like that. Okay, mm -hmm. Forget that. Throw that out. Old thought gone. Think about it as quality screens. What are your children doing online? What are they learning online? Um, uh, watching a Call of Duty for four hours is not the same thing as studying Latin for one hour, talking with grandma for another hour, then playing Among Us for another hour, and then the last hour of doing, I don't know, Spanish homework. Those four hours are not equal, and I think that we need to remember that content um, and to and to think of it that way. Now, on another side, I'm not a doctor, but a medical doctor, but I would say that screen time it might be the same as far as your eyes, your neck, your back, your straining. Uh, that might be the same, and that's where you have to take breaks and back away from the screen, etc. But when we're just talking about screen limits and screen time, the way we used to say, you know, pre-pandemic. We've changed things up now. So um, we've the chat's been blown up. Um, so, oh, um, Alice, we have. <laughs> uh, well, it's good. It's uh, we also need to remove that yeah. stigma that parents are feeling uh, they're bad if uh, their child is on the cell phone or the computer playing game. So exactly what you were referring to. Um, it's not the screen time is bad. It's like what is the quality level of that screen time? So that really speaks to this. Um, if I can bring this yeah. up, I don't know if it's going to work, but. Uh, Valerie says, yes, I talk to teachers a lot about giving themselves grace. So this is very relevant yeah. to them. And Faith mm -hmm. has a question. I'm going to see if I can bring up. I'm sorry. It's, it's I, can uh, see I don't have the best it. way yeah, of showing this it. yet, but uh, this is the best I that I can do for now. Uh, she's wondering, <laughs> I'm wondering about tips mm -hmm. for parents with uh, teens or preteens. They're not able to socialize yes. with their friends. So they do more with uh, Messenger and apps. We set limits on screen time and we monitor, but also understand that this is their way to reach oops uh to reach their friends luckily they go to school in person so that helps but it's still weighing the the pros and cons yeah i uh, it was a faith yes i think that's a brilliant question um because it really is that but i you already hit the the nail on the head um these are teens tweens um they are using social media they're using their apps to connect uh with with others and that is that is different. I'm going to even say that's like when we were kids and that was the necessary princess line phone with the long cord, you know, that you would be on for hours. Um, so as long as you're still having conversations with your teens and tweens, as long as, you know, they are acting respectfully, they're doing their homework. Um, I would also, I would say, you know, be, be be gentle with yourself, you know, but also propose um, when you can safely do so, propose, you know, some outdoor activities, propose things where they can see their friends, you know, socially distance um, an activity where they see one friend and then another week, the next friend. Um, get creative and really ask them what they would like to do. You know, what can you do to uh, to help them, you know, get over this whole remote situation that we're dealing in. I think you'd be pleasantly surprised that they have some ideas um, and that, you know, I would love to hear them too, because I'm always trying to gather up the best practices, the best strategies. And already, if you're talking with them and understanding what they're going through, um, that you're, you're ahead of the game, Faith. I think it's, I think it's great. Uh, if I can add to that, I, yes, please. I love, I agree, like the, you know, the forgiveness is a big aspect to it. You know, when we were growing up, you know, we, what did we do for social interaction? Like a lot of it, it did boil down to going to 
the playground and playing with other kids who are in the neighborhood. Well, what do kids do today? Well, what if the video games, the social media, all of those things is the playground for our kids these days? It is where they, it wasn't about like the, the monkey bars or those kind of things. It was about what you did with other kids. And so what you do with other kids is now more and more online. And so like one of the things I, I advocate for is when it comes to relating and connecting with their interests is not only understanding what, like, okay, maybe they're interested in Among Us or they're interested in, in other <laughs> video games. Why? What, what do they get out of it? What is their goal? What is their objective, right? Because you're trying to figure out if there is some kind of goal, how do I help them reach that goal quicker and faster? Because once you're doing that, then you kind of, it's not just about a screen time limit. It's about they're doing a lot of screen time because there's some need that isn't being met right now, potentially at home. Maybe there's a different way of meeting that need as well. And so uh, I love the question because we, we hear it a lot, right? It's like, yeah. oh, I'm, I'm really like, I don't know what to do. It, it feels like totally under control. It's, it's out of control because there's a lot of stuff that we don't know. But like, we don't know, hmm, do they want to do like a lot of screen time because they're, they're trying to like accomplish something together. They're trying to connect with friends. Like, are there, there are different issues that they're trying to resolve? Once we know those things and we know what we can help to, to reach that goal, there may be other ways that we can help them. Uh, that doesn't necessarily mean just, oh, reducing the screen time. It's like the screen time is just a tool. It's just one of many uh, that parents have available. Yes, and I love that you said um, playground because it just makes me all tingly because it's a great example to remind parents about the digital playground, right? So as you would, you know, if you're in that off uh, offline world and you took your child to the playground, you would be preparing them. You would be talking to them beforehand. Remember being proactive and not reactive, right? So you would talk to them about petting um, a strange dog, what to do if a dog approaches you that, without its owner, um, you know, talking with strangers, I don't know, playing in the sand it, it, so that way they're not touching all the disgusting stuff. I mean, the whole point is that you were guiding them. And so I just want to make sure that parents realize that you can guide them in the digital playground as well, uh, because you have your experience and your maturity to understand, you know, when there is somebody who is a dodgy character who is contacting your child, you're able to figure that out and to and to help them but the only way you're going to figure that out and know and be able to help them is if you're having open and transparent conversations where they're telling you what's happening on that digital playground 